welcome back, week four. I hope you're having a great time uh, experimenting with watercolor or learning. I'm hoping you're learning something. Um, I have this pad. This is the pad I use for the chart that I was complaining about. So don't ever buy this. This is, um, I don't know, I did not buy this. Uh, if I, if you notice, it says great crafts. Usually anything that this says anything generic like uh, craft isn't good. It must have come with a kit. Um, when I opened it, uh, it did have really nice texture to it. Like watercolor will have some type of texture. So I gave it a go and it really is cheap quality. So I don't recommend anything like at Walmart or any generic thing that has a craft kit with watercolor because as you can see from the previous videos, I'm not um, doing my techniques. To, the techniques aren't coming out the way they should. So that is the con of buying something super cheap. So just wanted to share that with you. And if you notice here, I actually started gluing. I didn't want to start over again because we were in the middle of this, but I actually glued some better paper on top of these, which, oh my goodness, I hope this works. <laughs> so here's the three new techniques we are going to learn. I'm going to try to do this. <laughs> All right, so first is uh, pushing out. You're going to be right and pushing out. Wipe out brush. And the last one is, as I promised last week, detail painting. All right. I got a tripod. I broke down. So I'm hoping this will work better. So, so now I have no excuses because I'm doing everything two-handed, right? All right. So the first one is pushing out. You can call it pushing out pigment if you want. So you're going to be using um, a flat brush here. And just pick up some paint. Just wet your brush. Pick up some paint. You can, um, like right here, you could just add a little water. This is not wash again. You want some paint on here. You don't want it completely watered down. And you're going to start at the bottom and flip up. Pushing out. So I did do a little too much water. If it runs, that means you did too much water. Okay, pushing out. I mean, if you want to add water, it will give some interesting, interesting um, te technique or texture or whatever. Okay, the next one is kind of like last week where it was like lift and feather out, if you remember. And of course, as you can see, it does not work out with this cheap paper. I don't know where I put the other paper, but this is my old one, and that's how it's supposed to look. It's kind of the same. Um, feathering out is where you just want to, like, fade it out. Wipe out brush is actually when you put color on, you just want to... I think I showed you last week a little bit. You actually want to wipe out the color. Um, for any reason, maybe you find it's too dark, or you just want blotches. or It depends on what you're going for. So, uh, let's see, how about red? And this, for this, I guess, I guess, uh, it can be somewhat dry, but I find this technique better with a wet paint, more so, like a wetter, um, more watered down. This is really dry, like the dry brush technique, I think you could pull it off, but it just won't work as well. But most watercolor, you're going to have a lot of wet anyway. So you're going to take a clean, wet brush. So I don't paint on. And you're just going to rinse and just pick up color. You're literally wiping out the color with your brush. I'm so glad I put this paper on because this would not work at all if I put it on here. Alright, that's wipe out brush. Now detail painting, this is a little different than the dry brush. The dry brush, you're kind of just making marks with um, a liner brush. I don't want you falling over here and you are. There we go. Um, so what a detail brush, you want to get the smallest. Well, I, you can get a bigger round brush, but I don't have a lot of space here. So get your small round brush. It's got to have a good tip. 
and you're going to not be completely dry with this. You're going to have um, not watered down paint. You're just going to have wet paint on there. So I'm getting some paint. If you notice, I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of like just nice green paint on. It's not dripping. It's not completely dry. Okay. And you can do some interesting things um, with this. You can do a skinny straight line like we did with the dry brush. You can flatten out and then taper too thin. Okay. Um, you can go thin to thin, thick to thin. Okay, so it's kind of like, reminds me a little bit of calligraphy, because you can use the fat part of the brush, and then you can taper out to the skinny part, because of the round brush, the way it's just designed. I mean, you can even just, you know, whatever you want, or teardrops. But this gives you a little more detail than a liner brush would, and you want the paint to nicely glide off. Okay? The dry brush, as you see here, let's do, let me move it over. It's kind of just, um, you can actually see some of the paint that didn't cover all the way. It's actually a dry brush and it doesn't glide as well. Um, but this should glide better. You can do a little bit of gliding with dry brush, but that's all right. So again, pushing out pigment or pushing out. Wipe out brush and detail painting, which I really like to do. All right, so we're going to start with our project today. I'm going to actually hide the how to do it in steps because of, again. All right. So I am going to use a seashell, a seashell scape, for an example today. So I need to find, oh, there's my pencil. So again, I'm gonna be drawing this a little more heavier than you would, but I'm gonna start at the middle of the page. Now, again, you don't have to do this exact image. This is just, you know, if you wanna practice these techniques, or you can do the same image and do kind of make it your own. I'm gonna start out small and tight, and then I'm gonna get bigger. I'm gonna keep it round. Might want to done it bigger, but whatever. Okay, maybe I should be darker. I don't know if you can see. Okay, a simple seashell. So first technique we're going to do is the person out pigment. Actually, we're going to go in the exact same order as we did on the sheet. So this, you want a round brush, I mean a round brush, a flat, flat brush. So um, if you have a smaller one, a flat brush, you can use it because we're going to be pushing out along the edges and it's going to get harder. You can kind of maneuver it in here. Um, but if you do have a somehow a smaller one, for the inside here, feel free to use it. Or sometimes I'll just quickly, just for the inside here, just use a round brush. So what, if you're interested in my colors, um, this one I'm using, um, the blue I'm using is called Theo Blue, that I'm gonna be using right now, which is a bright blue. I think I have a lot of water here, so I'm gonna, I'm going to start on, I don't know why I'm starting, but I'm going to start at the edge here and then push out. See, this brush is a little big, but I want to dry this out a little bit. I forgot a rag here, so, <laughs> but we're going to keep going. All right, see how the drier brush, the drier, less wet makes a different look than the wet? It, neither is wrong. You're still doing the same technique. 
It's just depending on what you want. I think I'm going to go more with a dry or less wet paint. I think it gives it more texture. I actually might want to pick some of this and just continue. Now see how it's a little tricky getting in here. I don't, I might have a smaller flat brush, but I'm assuming you don't have like a hundred brushes like I do. So I'm going to try to use what you most likely will have. Uh, you can kind of still do it a little bit with the small round brush. But I'm just going to just add color because it's really just color when you get in here. Okay. Now, for the sake of time, I'm not, you could do this two ways. I'm going to put a yellow background. You could, I didn't do this because it would be like three, four step process. You could just put a whole wash on here, like we did in the first week, and then let it dry and then do the seashell on top. Or you can just, you know, wet it and then uh, like a wash, but leave this area white, let it dry and do it. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to take, instead of a wash, I'm going to take, this is Yellow Orchid, which, and I'm just going to take wet paint, but I'm not going to saturate the um, paper first, because what will happen, it will run into this. I'm just going to add color, just for the sake of time. But, like I said, if you want to do a wash before... That will be, because I'm, I'm just kind of controlling this. See, it, it runs a little bit, but I'm just adding color in here. And since this part's dry, I'm not having that much of an issue anyway, but... I was thinking more like a sandy color, so I picked this kind of um, not bright yellow. It's not really a yellow either, it's just kind of a tan yellow. Now, you could do a cut if you want, just for the fun of it. I don't think I did it for my second part of this. You can do wipe out brush, but we'll, we'll do some on the seashell. If you just want some like areas where you don't you know maybe you want lighter just some texture to add to pick some stuff up you can do that um i think yeah i'm pretty sure i did pretty much a solid color and then if you want for a shadow you could um put a little shadow under here Whatever. You're going to be covering this up with some detail, but it'll give you some darker color under here. So the sec, the first part of your, your project, if you're doing this example, would look like this. Hopefully by the time we do the background, this will be dry. I'm going to add the second color in. I see I did do it in my second part. I am using, I think, I'm finding out I need to buy more tube paint. So, and this pan color, the, the thing I don't like about the pan color watercolor is there's, they don't have it labeled what color is what. I have an idea because I've just been using color for so long. I am trying to aim for raw sienna, it's called, but it looks like the ones I have here don't really have a real true raw sienna. It's more of a tan. So this is, I'm going to go for brighter, I think. Yeah. I'm going to go for more of an Indian red. I don't see a true raw sienna here. This is more of an Indian red. All right. So first I'm going to do, I'm going to wet this a little bit. Remember the technique wet on wet? I'm going to go for that, that look. 
But I'm not going to go crazy with it, though. I'm just going to put a little water in here. I'm going to take a little bit of my Indian red, I'm going to call it. And just sort of, and I might want to, like, manipulate to run into the thayer blue a little bit. I like how seashells kind of have, like, interesting colors, so I'd... And they don't forget the middle, I just, whatever. Now for the wipeout brush, which you can use for this, because, you know, shells have different designs and um, color throughout. I'm going to wipe out part of this. So what I'm going to do, since there's a shadow here, I'm going to wipe out the other side where the sunlight, well, actually this is going to be underwater, I think, but whatever, sunlight. I think that dried already. I'm going to pick some up. That's good because that's actually blurry anyway because I used their wet paint. So I'm just going to go with it. So you could do some pick up brush there. You can do it down here. Now this is interesting. I didn't mean this happened. See how like the, the water formed the line. If you don't like it, you can cover it. But sometimes watercolor just does things and you're like, oh, I kind of like that. Just had that water, but you know, if I didn't like that, I'm like, oh, that just looks ugly. You just add more to it. Now you can do even, um, you know, like, well, I like it the wet, but I'm just gonna. You can even do wet on wet or whatever and make it interesting. It's whatever you want. I'm just messing around here. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. You might want to darker and have it come lighter in certain areas or whatever. So generally when you're done with the first section of this, you're going to have two colors on this and some kind of a background of a seashell. Now I'm going to move down here. I use different colors here. Sorry. This has more of a bright yellow. The colors on the, the seashell I think are exactly the same. Maybe so I don't like, drop you on there. All right, so now we're going to do some detailed painting. So you want to grab your skinny round brush for this. I am going to do more for this, this part. I'm going to outline the shell a little bit. I would do more of a dry, not completely, but comp um, more of a dry brush and wet. Because I just want to, just quick, just for fun, outline this. But you don't have to. I'm just giving you ideas what you can do. You might find this, this is too unnatural or whatever. Okay. If you want, you can even, now this is dry, this is, you're putting this on after it's just dry, you can kind of blurry the line a little bit. So it's kind of like an outline, but it's not such a, like it doesn't look like you just drew on it. I think it makes it pop, but it depends on what you're, look you're going for too. I kind of like that a little better. Makes it make more watercolor look. Okay, so we're sticking with the same brush. I'm going to draw some little stones or, or some impressions of like sand. So I am going to, just for the color scheme, I'm going to pick up the Indian red. So I kind of want to bring it out. And you could just take the small point and make little stones. Maybe they're shells, I don't know. I'm just showing you what you can do with this brush, really. You can do um, little dots. I have a really fun way to make sand in week six. 
this is just you want to just put in a couple dots. I hear pitter patters. I think I'm going to be in trouble in a minute. <laughs> All right, someone's going to want breakfast. <laughs> Okay, now for just another to play around with what you can do with a round brush, I'm just going to put some seaweed in here. Just I, I showed you on the chart, but so I'm just going to take the thick part of my brush and taper out. See how I got really thick and thin? It's kind of fun. It's kind of like messing around like calligraphy again. Like, see what parts twist it, twist and turn. See how I twist and turn that? That's, what I, that's what's really cool about round brushes. And if you get what you call a bamboo, bamboo brush, which is a Chinese brush they use a lot in Chinese painting, they use a lot of this kind of technique, but it's they're a lot bigger round but I think I'll show you but mine are really worn down they will look like this they're like bamboo brushes now these I had since college and I, I should use some like I need to buy more but they usually come to a tip like that and then you can do the same kind of techniques and, but you can do washes and, and stuff and they use it's kind of like watercolor. They use like a certain kind of ink, and it's usually like uh, black ink, and then they might put some a little bit of red, but it's a lot like watercolor, and this is a bamboo brush, which you can use. They're fun to use. You just have to make sure after you use them to wet it and twist it, but these are so old, they just lost its shape. I need to buy more. All right, so... That is pretty much it. So just play around with this. Again, I'll post some ideas for you uh, to use these techniques. But again, you know, you're pushing out here. You're actually using your wet on wet if you do this. You've got your um, wipe out brush anywhere you want. That's just wherever you think it will look good. And your detail paint in here. So. All right, have fun, post your work. I'd love to see it, and I will see you next week. We're going to mess around with crayons, believe it or not, and then we're going to, I'm going to show you what masking fluid can do, but don't buy it. It's expensive. I will show you the difference between the pros and cons between crayons and masking fluid and actually masking tape, and we'll, you can just decide if you even want to make that investment, but I'll be showing you how to use it. All right, so have a great week and have fun.